So, how is everyone? I hope you're all well. A little bit different video today, and it's going to get you thinking about different things. And some of those things that you're going to be forced to think about may be conflictive. You may struggle to consider what I'm putting across. And to be fair, I know that it's going to be quite a struggle because it's quite a struggle for me to even answer this question. And I know what you're thinking, get on with it. It's Monday. It's bad enough as it is Monday friggin' morning. Get on with it. So let's get straight into the meat and potatoes. What are we talking about? We're talking about Brian Koberger. And in particular, what we're asking ourselves is when you take everything into consideration, what we know, which it could be a fair bit, you know, there is a lot of stuff out there. We've heard about potential for visual snow and the numerous things that an account that we believe is Brian Koberger had struggled with for a long, long time. Depersonalization, you know, detaching himself from reality. And I didn't really think about that until I was watching a series over the last few days, Marcella. Now, for those of you who haven't seen that, I would say go and watch it. Go and watch Marcella. Now, this is about a a female played by Anna Frail. She is a British actress. This is a British crime series. There's three series. And it depicts a a female who is she works for law enforcement and something has happened in her life and I'm not going I'm going to try and talk about it without ruining it but this this tragedy this thing that happened meant that she suffers from a depersonalization a derealization where she detaches from reality when she's put under specific situations and I thought to myself, this is, a, this is a real thing. This is something that people do indeed suffer from. And when you look at the things that can happen during this time, the thing that people can become, what they can be capable of, it, it asks a very hard question of people, and that is that do specific things that people can suffer from make the things that they do something that you have to accept as not their fault. Could Brian Koberger have been suffering from something so bad and he'd been suffering with it for so long that what happened at the 1122 King Row property, and again, I say this if he is indeed the person who did it again, and without sounding like a broken record, it is innocent until proven guilty. And as a side note, I did hear some people say, well, you were up for this innocent until proven guilty, so about Buster Murdoch, mate, what makes you think that he's guilty? And, you know, that's for another video in itself. Do I think that Buster Murdoch is guilty of anything? Yes, I do. But do, does that mean I'm right? No, it doesn't. It has no bearing on anything whatsoever. It's just my opinion and the in in the realms of the law and due process, he has to do that. He, same with Brian Koberger. I have thoughts and feelings about the situation, the case, what happened, and so on and so forth. But due process will hopefully get justice. But this is what I'm trying to talk about. What would be justice? Say he did indeed do it, and it is proven that he did indeed have these mental health issues, and he had had them for many, many years. Is there a world in which the things that Brian Koberger did, do we have to consider that perhaps there is more to it? It's not so easy to just say that this is a monster and he did the things that he did. Again, I struggle. It's not an easy question to answer. But imagine someone who, who can flick a switch and they are... That they do not understand where they are. They don't understand the world that they're in. They don't understand what is going on around them. They don't process the information like you or I do. They see things very, very differently. 
for those of you who are new to the channel, I, I said about my mum and her psychotic break, and I watched her unravel at a rate of knots, a severe rate of knots, and the things that she did. And I and I consider how she could have harmed others if it weren't for the fact that she directed a lot of what she was going to do that day inward and it became an attempt to take her own life and look i get that it's a difficult pill to swallow that do we have to be in a situation where we have to consider what brian may have done and the reasons behind it but does this point to a bigger underlying issue that there are indeed huge things surrounding mental health and the many, many intricacies of that that are not getting looked at. They are not being understood. They're still being thought of as this, this thing that we don't fully understand. If we don't understand, it just becomes a label to which there is stigma attached to it. And it's easier to look at it in a certain way than to understand that it is indeed an illness. It is indeed a condition that the sufferer has no control over. And look, this is me asking a question. This is not me trying to push a specific narrative. I just take into consideration the visual snow, the again, the depersonalization, the derealization, the 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 thought that he is living this video game life and he has no thoughts and feelings towards even those around him, the people who he should hold dear and hold close. The fact that he looks so nonchalant, he's not going for mental health help because perhaps he doesn't consider or understand that there is indeed something wrong with him. Is he not processing the information? And look, at the end of the day, in Idaho, you know, insanity, please, or mental capacity is not taken into consideration. But is that wrong? Or is there some people out there who will feel, well, it shouldn't be. If you do something, you should be punished. It doesn't really matter about how you feel, what you're going through, what the diseases are, what is issues within your brain. But having myself watch someone close to me very, very quickly unravel and become such a ticking time bomb. You know, during the time after what happened with my own mum, you know, I was attacked, I was stabbed, I was... And this is a mum and her child. It's, it's not always black and white. There is a grey area. But I want you to let me know what your thoughts are. You know, is it wrong that perhaps there will be no consideration for Brian Koberger's potential mental state, mental capacity, and what he was suffering with. Should that be considered? Is it right to not be considered? Does the crime in itself warrant, because of the heinous nature of it, it just warrants punishment regardless of anything else? I'm interested on your thoughts. Please don't think this is me trying to preach anything. I'm just forming a conversation that looks at a very, very intricate and difficult situation that I feel we do sometimes have to consider. And I'll catch you all in the next one.